Center Pangolin and uh, Committee was oversight of uh, uh, is the chair of uh, the Office of uh, Finance and, and Budget uh, has apologized, of course, for not being uh, here this morning uh, for um, the budget hearing. But his office uh, will continue, of course, to provide you know an analysis for the committee and also will uh, transcribe these hearings. As I've announced um, uh, for the last uh, two days that we're here, is that he was invited to, to give you know an address to a bunch of individuals uh, who are working on a, a, an initiative, which is a military housing privatization initiative. And he was one of the uh, keynote speakers, and he had just delivered it uh, his speech yesterday. So, uh, if so, naturally that you know uh, explains his uh, absence. But if anyone should have any questions or concerns, of course, about the budget hearings or any of the budget submittals that, you know, uh, to the legislature, then you can contact his office at 473-4236 or 7. So for today, or this morning, we are going to have the uh, budget hearing for Guam Community College. And then this afternoon at 1 o'clock, it will be with the Public Defender Service Corporation. And with me then this morning, I, uh, to my left, and I thank my colleagues for joining me, Senator Chris Duenas and Senator Tony Ada, and other members I know uh, will be joining us uh, also later. And um, for uh, GCC, we have the President, uh, Mary Okada, Dr. Okada, and I'd like to ask you to introduce you know, the staff that you've brought with you this morning. This morning we have the the chairwoman for the uh, Guam Community College Board of Trustees, uh, Ms. Gina Ramos, that will... It's on? It's, it's on? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's funny. I Test. Test. Okay. <clears throat> Was I loud here, too, or not? Or am I just using my school principal voice? We just want to make sure because people will watch. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So audio, if you can, audio, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear that now? Yes, it's yes. now working. Okay, okay so as all over again. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, the committee, uh, the Office of Finance and Budgeting uh, is um, holding a series of budget hearings and as the vice chair of the Office of Finance and, and Budget, uh, Senator Penglin, of course, has asked me to proceed with the hearings until his return. He apologizes uh, for not being uh, here this morning, uh, but his staff uh, continues, of course, to do an analysis of uh, the budgets, uh, their submittals. And I'd just like to again report that uh, the, the senator was invited to as a keynote speaker to a, a conference that was taking place in Washington, D.C., which has to do with the Military Housing Privatization Initiative. Um, that is a, a very big you know, concern, of course, of uh, uh, you know, the local community where we would want to always ensure that you know, with the military buildup that as much as possible, uh, the activities or any buildup as well besides inside the fence that we want to make sure that outside the fence as well is that the community uh, benefits from this as well which of course will contribute to you know our economy and so but if anyone has any uh, questions of course and, and concerns about the budget hearings and uh, about you know the budget submittals uh, that they can call the senator's office uh, OFB at 473-4236 or 7 and so this morning we are then with um, the Guam Community College to present their budget in defense of their budget. And at 1 o'clock this afternoon, it will be the Public Defender Service Corporation. With me, joining me this morning are my colleagues to my left, Senator Chris Duenas and Senator Tony Ada. Thank you very much. And uh, for the Guam Community College, we have Dr. Mary Okada, the president and CEO of GCC. And if you can... Please introduce those that you've brought with you to testify. Testifying this morning on behalf of the Guam Community College is the chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Gina Ramos, and uh, I will be testifying as well. And um, 
I also have Vice President Carmen Santos here to provide additional information as needed. Thank you. So you may then uh, proceed. Good morning, Speaker Wampat, Senator Duenas, Senator Ada. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today to present my testimony in support of the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget request for Guam Community College. I have served as a chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Guam Community College for five years now. The college's continuous transformation into an institution that provides full career and technical education opportunities for the people of Guam and our region has been an effort of many, the faculty, staff, administrators, Foundation Board of Governors, and the College Board of Trustees. As GCC expands its enrollment, physical facilities, programs, and partnerships with Guam's businesses and government entities, the Board of Trustees continues to support its efforts. Throughout the past several years, I have personally witnessed this phenomenal growth and expansion. As an institution of higher education, GCC continues to lead the way for our surrounding region. With regard to actual data for the college in terms of expansion, GCC offers the following additional educational opportunities for our students. EMT certification and pre-architectural drafting, and we are currently developing a curriculum for photovoltaic or solar panel installation technicians. All of these additions to our curriculum are in response to the needs of our businesses and community. Also in the past four years, GCC has experienced a 20, 26% increase in enrollment. This year alone, the college graduated its highest number to date, 348 students. Included in that number are 73 apprenticeship graduates, also a record number. In line with President Obama's administration, in terms of college completion and increased industry certifications, GCC has expanded its recruitment efforts. One of the ways that the college has achieved this was through support and collaboration with the University of Guam Board of Regents and the Guam Department of Education Board. The Tri-Board successfully adopted the College and Career Readiness Initiative that is designed to increase the number of students that enter post-secondary education. As Governor Calvo and his administration strive to transition residents out of poverty, our focus continues to be to train, retrain, and educate our residents. For the past year, the college has struggled with the level of, uh, of appropriation funding provided by the legislature. Although funding from exter external sources continues to increase, these grants are earmarked specifically for educational requirements set forth by the grantor agencies and by law cannot be used for operational purposes. Our board members recognize that the faculty, staff, and administrators at GCC provide an outstanding and fiscally responsible example for the rest of the government of Guam. For example, both faculty and administrators are on a rigorous pay-for-performance evaluation program. This was an initiative developed several years ago that has now been implemented. It is imperative that these employees are recognized for their continuous efforts to do their jobs and to do them well. Also, for 11 consecutive years now, the college has demonstrated fiscal accountability by being designated a low-risk auditee. This highest recognition for financial compliance and accountability by the public auditor truly demonstrates that GCC delivers the greatest rate of return on your investments in the college. Right now, GCC's product is exceptional. Island businesses are hiring our graduates and telling us how well-trained and professional they are in the workplace environment. We need your help in order to be able to continue this trend. We want the off-island companies that come to Guam to look at our local workforce and say, these people are so well-trained and professional that we will not need to hire from off-island. We can just hire locally. That is our goal. Finally, GCC completed the evaluation review in March 2012 for reaffirmation of its accreditation by the Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges, Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Through this process, all facets of the college, including the trustees and Board of Governors, participated in preparing the college for the review. 
It was heartwarming to hear the commendations given to college employees and board members for their tireless efforts in several areas. One most no notably for the board was the commitment of the board in support of the college. We are confident that through our efforts, GCC will earn another six years of accreditation. Your continuous funding support allows GCC to adequately staff and maintain its facilities. The level of funding submitted to you today will assist us not only with our reaffirmation of accreditation efforts, but also with our educational expansion endeavors. Senators, we appreciate all that you do for us and all the support you have given GCC up to this point. We also gratefully acknowledge the support given to the college by all of the previous legislatures and administrations over the past 35 years. As we move forward with further educational and workforce development opportunities for Guam and the region, we look forward to your continued support now and in the future. Thank you and Sijus Maasi. Thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Akana. Half a day and good morning, Speaker Wampat, Senator Duenas, and Senator Atta. Thank you also for the opportunity to present the 2013 budget for the Guam Community College. As the college prepares for the fall semester 2012, we focus on the mission of the college, to be a leader in career and technical workforce development by providing the highest quality education and job training in Micronesia. By reciting this mission, it sets the tone for our discussions and allows us to focus our decision on what really matters the most to all of us, student success. In the fall of 2011, the college enrolled 2,556 students. This is a slight increase over fall 2010. However, this represents a 44% increase since fall of 2006. Spring 2011 enrollment was at 2,480 students, or a 42% increase since spring of 2007. Just based on these numbers alone, we can see the significant interest of our residents to pursue post-secondary education. I will also say that this significant increase in enrollment is due to the hard work and dedication of our employees at the college. So while we're on the topic of employees, I would like for the legislature to continue the support for our classified ranks of employees. They deserve the implementation of the Hayes study. They need to be rewarded for their efforts in keeping critical services for the government of Guam available. For these civil servants, GCC civil servants, I support efforts to finally provide them with an opportunity to excel in their line of work and be compensated accordingly. Many of their job titles are outdated and do not reflect the updated technologies that are required for many of them to perform their basic functions. The college continues to be at the forefront front of planning, which enable us to provide the best educational experiences for our students while affording them the skills necessary to obtain jobs. We have a mature assessment process that allows us to set goals and objectives for every academic department and administrative at GCC. These assessment results are reviewed annually and decisions regarding budgeting are guided by the outcomes of this review. This is the one of the components of our accreditation process. Although quite an extensive process, it allows the college to focus on areas that need further review, expansion, downsizing, or funding. A few months ago, in March of 2012, the college underwent its accreditation peer review. The college prepared for this review for several years. Many of the initiatives we have set in place over the past years helped us to prepare for this visit. In the next couple of days, we will know the official results of that visit. The college is confident that we will obtain another six years as a fully accredited institution. Before I go over the numbers associated with our budget request, I would like to emphasize that the numbers take us to certain levels, and greater numbers in terms of financial support will take us to sustainable levels. As I present the fiscal year 2000 budget for GCC, let me take this opportunity to provide you with a brief update on many of the projects that we've been working on this past year. For the past several years, government appropriations, bills, and laws have focused on accountability and transparency. GCC models these requirements in showcasing due diligence in all of these areas. 
This is a worthwhile accomplishment, one in which the college takes pride by obtaining and maintaining its credibility. The college supported many government initiatives, both at the local and federal levels. Sustainability, college and career readiness, skill attainment, and national certifications, just to name a few. These initiatives were taken on in addition to increasing courses such as EMT certification, pre-architectural drafting and others, and providing support for many students. Funding for these opportunities have been made possible through federal funds provided as seed money to develop programs. However, the sustainability of these initiatives will be our challenge. What this means going forward into fiscal year 2013 focuses on the increasing need for the college to seek alternative funding sources to support its mission. As in years past, we've been quite successful in the area as increases at the federal level, level have been av available, though quite competitive. In the upcoming months, the college will open yet another renovated facility, the GCC Foundation Building. This building will be the new home for our adult e education programs and additional classrooms. We will relocate our bookstore to this new location and provide more space for students to convene and study. This will be our gem for the calendar year. But you all know that the college will continue its efforts to search for alternate means to do even more expansion and renovation. Through support from all areas from Bill 457, now Public Law 31-229, the college will continue to expand its physical footprint. This includes the construction, renovation, and expansion of buildings 100 and 200, along with the construction of the DNA lab extension for the Guam Police Department. We are pleased with the pro our progress in moving these projects forward. Now that I've provided you with an overview of some of the things that we, that we have done in our planning, it's time to discuss our fiscal year 2013 budget request. The college request $20 million $294,740 for fiscal year 2013. Based on the budget submitted for the college in the governor's request of $15,719,271, this is approximately $4.5 million more than this request. And Speaker Wampat, I know you're looking at this and saying, holy cow. But let me assure you, in as much as the college would like to support what was submitted, the college cannot continue funding at that level, especially when each fiscal year starts off with a budget set aside. The current fiscal year funding from the general fund only covers salaries, benefits, and some utility cost. The set aside is pegged at over $2 million right now. Based on our current authorization, the college will be unable to certify payroll this July without the release of these funds. We are working, however, with the administration to release these funds so that critical services of providing educational opportunities to our students will be possible. Senators, as you continue to deliberate on the fiscal year 2013 budget, I urge you to consider the full appropriation request for the Guam Community College of $20,294,740. Education is the key for economic development, sustainability, and maintaining a quality of life for our residents. Think of it as a decision where you will get the greatest return on your investment, and that decision will be easy. GCC provides the return that you are looking for and has the credibility to stand by that decision. Seduce Masi for your time, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and, you know, Mary, I think you know my position is that uh, if I could do this alone, I'll give you the actual re your request. Um, because if there's anyone who has uh, proven, of course, that, you know, you to build four buildings without, you know, any local funds, you definitely uh, deserve this. And I, I wish, of course, that we'll be able to, to say that those have done well, that we want to reward them. And those who just kind of stay at the same level or lower, you know, we continue to keep them at the same level of funding. It's, it's unfortunate it doesn't work that way. 
But I will, you know, personally, this is only me. I can't say this about OFB when they do uh, the final analysis and the whole packet is prepared. But I, I'll do what I can to definitely, you know, take as much money to, to send, send it your way. But uh, since I'm only a stand-in, and on behalf of uh, Senator Pangolin, and I would then proceed with uh, the analysis that was uh, done by uh, the staff, and and it would be based, of course, on your your budget request. And it's a comparison, of course, of uh, what your current level is and what your requ the governor's request and what your um, request is. So the now that so this in summary here, the summary information sheet that we have is that the. We, we put a chart uh, together to do that comparison between the general fund and special fund for fiscal year 2012, current operational levels, and 2013 executive budget request. Now, there is minimal difference between, of course, your request and that of uh, the governor's uh, request. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at 2012, uh, you're at 15.717. And the executive branch request for the new fiscal year is 15719. So it, it's really a 0.01% uh, difference and to keep uh, the college at um, the current level. The net difference, of course, between the executive request and that of your request now, of course, as you stated in your testimony, is a uh, little over $4.5 million, which is a 29.11% increase. Now, in doing an, a comparison again here from the governor's request versus your request on operational appropriation, the governor's ceiling is 13.3, and your budget submission is 17.5. That's for operational appropriation. And the difference is 31.66%. Uh, Your LPN and vocational guidance program, the governor's request is $705,058, and your request is $806,255. Your lodging management program, or ProStart, the governor's request was $24,154. Uh, we didn't get a, any submittal from the college on that, so that's zero. The apprenticeship program is $1.6 million and from the governor's uh, ceiling, and your budget submission is 1.9. So hence, of course, uh, the governor's request, when you add those all up, is 15.7, and the college's uh, request is 20.2. So we, I mean, just based on, on, on that, of course, then we can see the, the, the big difference. I mean, if we were to stay with the governor's request, then there's just a 0.01% a um, increase. So the request that you've submitted, of course, totals over 20 million for 2013, whereas the executive budget uh, is at 15.5 million, which is consistent, of course, with what your budget was for last year. So is G, and this is the big question that we ask everybody, and I'm going to ask you the same thing, and I know what your answer is already, but it has to be asked, is GCC able to live within the executive budget request level for fiscal year 2013 while avoiding any student tuition increase? No, and the reason why I say that is because we just instituted a tuition increase, so the, the net effect will not be an increase to tuition. As I mentioned earlier, because the general fund covers only salaries, benefits, and utilities, the impact is going to be on the staffing of the college. It's the staffing. Now, although there's a comparison between the the uh, current fiscal year budget, the current fiscal year budget has a $2 million set aside. So although the, the $15.7 million is the current fiscal year budget, 
We're operating right now on a $13.6 million budget. And as I indicated earlier, in July, I will not be able to certify payroll because it's paid for by the general fund. Okay, so you've indicated then that you've already instituted a tuition increase. The tuition increase was part of a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. The board had opted at certain points to uh, hold off on the tuition increase uh, two times, and we instituted the tuition increase uh, last year with the support of the students. So the rate then uh, that you're operating with, of course, the governor says set aside there, uh, of about $2 million, then you're saying that there's going to be a shortfall by July. Yes. And you won't be able to make payroll. Were you at the beginning of the fiscal year knowing this um, used tuition to to assist in the operations of the university or I mean the college or are you just operating strictly on the uh, 13 million okay the 13 million again is only for the um, is only for the salaries, salaries and benefits and utilities for the employees the operational component is um, for fixed contractual services is actually um, part of our authorization to use out of the manpower development fund there is language in the uh, current legislation uh, for fiscal year 2012 that says um, to the extent uh, after the apprenticeship program has been you know satisfied that the uh, College Board of Trustees has the authority to use uh, MDF for ops operations. Mm -hmm. And how much were you able to use uh, the fund for operation? It's about eight hundred thousand. To go through now the uh, breakdown by object categories. And in your, your, your budget digest, when it came to salaries, uh, it shows that it was a $9.6 million for salaries. However, in your budget submittal, there it's listed as 10, of course, $1,575,708 uh, was from your staffing pattern. Can you give us you know a, a reason as to the difference between the two part of it has to do with the um, the institution of pay for performance for faculty and administrators um, all the increases to staffing uh, additional increases to staffing is not reflected in that amount because that comes out of our tuition and fees um, and the increase in the Oh, benefits is separate. So it's actually the uh, instituted pay for performance for faculty and administrators. And plus filling some of the critical. So there are some new positions in this budget of 10.7. Um, there have been some uh, new requirements. Um, we've held off as much as we can in hiring. But again, as we continue to add more work to the staff, we try to um, allow for additional staffing positions so that they are not overburdened uh, with the uh, expansion of the college and not the ability to expand staff. So there are some new positions in this in this budget request. And we've also included the uh, post commission. So there is one position in there for the post commission. For contractual services, there is an increase of 848,936, and as uh, you know, we went through the uh, the digest. If you go to the executive side on Schedule B, and for contractual, you you don't have any breakdown of what those contractual services are. No details at all from page 11 to page 12. What are, are some of those uh, contractual needs or requests? Page 11 to page 12. 12. Mm -hmm. The 383,000 is broken down. Yes, but uh, oh. we're, we're taking just a, the first part, which is in the executive office, where you have oh, contractual listed 500, 
9,450, 22,000, 10,000, 5,000, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, okay. and so on down. But no detail compared to what you have above uh, so and with some explanation. So that's a summary. The details, the details are uh, started actually page um, 73. Start at page 73, and that encompasses uh, all the uh, offices under the executive office, including the Board of Trustees, the Office of the President, Communications and Promotions, uh, Planning and Development, GED. The biggest part of that is uh, facilities, and those are all outlined in the, uh, in the detail in the back. So it'll identify, like for example, under facilities, we've got janitorial services, pest control, and, and uh, Planning and development is under the Office of the President, and facilities is a subcomponent of that. So that's classified under the Executive Office. Ground maintenance, uh, sprinkler system, water pump maintenance, uh, trash pickup. So it's all the details of, that's just an overview or a basic summary. Um, and the, the roll-ups or the details are in the back. Now, when you look again, go back to that summary, and then, sure. of course, the in the format here it says funded in fiscal year 2012. Every one of these contractual services are, you've indicated, of course, no. So the question then is, is how were you able then to? Okay, so our interpretation is, was it funded in fiscal year 2012? And the answer is no, because this is a 2013 request. Mm -hmm. So fiscal year 2012 did not include fiscal year 2013 obligations. So this is a new obligation, and so that's how we've always interpreted so that. So how then? Are you handling these obligations already that, I mean, so the, all the work that's not in your 2012 that were performed, how then are you, were you able to pay those? Okay, again, let me explain. How we've, okay, these are new fiscal year 2013 requirements. Mm -hmm. So 2013 Requ wait, wait, requirements. Contractual obligations. New ones. New, okay. You, that means you have not had these before. At the end of the fiscal year, it terminates. So in other words, in this fiscal year 2013 budget, is any portion of fiscal year 2013 funded in the prior year? And the answer is no. Was it funded in 2012 on the 2012 budget? The answer is yes. Okay, so see, that's where yeah. it's not been. Yeah, that's where it's not, that's yes. What, um, that's correct. They're saying that this wasn't funded. I mean, the interpretation, of course, and then the analysis is that it wasn't funded and therefore in 2012, so then these are all new requests. No, ma'am. Okay, Continued but requests, but new fiscal year. Okay. And for supplies and materials, there's an increase of $285,886. Okay, so under supplies and materials, there are several things that we've included under supplies and materials, of course, the operations of the Xerox machines, the fuel that we use, uh, regular instructional supplies. Uh, there are some instructional supplies here specifically for secondary. So those are also embedded to some extent in our fiscal year 2013 budget. Vehicle maintenance, regular office supplies, um, computer software upgrades for some of our uh, labs, custodial cleaning and their supplies. And for equipment, there's an increase of $217,078. Okay. Under the, uh, yeah, under the, um, under the computer equipment, there's a significant amount in here for the ProStart kitchen supplies. These are for the high school programs. 
and the uh, workbooks and textbooks necessary for uh, secondary. Now, some of these are provided under the Title V grant, but not all of them for the high school. Oh, and then the requirement for the um, matching component for the adult high school. So the federal government provides us with um, federal funds to support the adult high school and the GED program, but there's a, um, a local match that we have to maintain, and so there's some textbooks and some uh, requirements uh, for that program as well. So what is the uh, percentage of the local match? Um, I think the, I think right now the local match for the whole grant is probably around 200 some thousand, but we have to maintain that in subsequent years, maybe about 12%, 12% requirement. So I, th I think this is really important that, uh, you say it doesn't show here. But it's important to, to list that, that if there is that uh, matching. It's on the federal program inventory, found on page, what page? 63. 63. OK, so for the adult, sorry, it's uh, the federal match is uh, for the adult basic ed, it's 50,582. And that's in column C. And um, that's it. Are there any other programs similar to this where there is that a federal match? The federal ma there is a federal match for all institutions or all educational uh, institutions on Guam uh, that is required by the College Access and um, College Access Challenge Grant. But that doesn't just take a look at the GCC budget; it takes a look at budget for the government of Guam as a whole for education. But where, but where does it reflect, though, in your budget? It doesn't, because it's not a GCC requirement specifically. In order for us to maintain the grant funding of 1.5 million, Guam as a state, we are just state designated. Guam as a state must maintain the maintain or must um, continue the maintenance of effort on all education funding for the state. Once we reach, once we go below that threshold. Uh, we will lose the $1.5 million. And we've just uh, submitted for the next year and have met the requirement for the 2013 grant. There was a... a um minimal increase in your general fund request uh, for salary levels on uh, 2012 current levels. The increase in benefits is mainly due to an increase in the retirement contribution rate from 28.3 to 30.9. Can you explain wh why that has uh, increased? Can you repeat that again? Your, your benefits Okay. Due to retirement contribution rates? Yes. So there's an increase. Is, there, is that for the new employees? The new positions that you hired? I think 28.3 is the number that we were asked, I believe, to um, use for our fiscal year 2013 mm -hmm. budget development. Oh, 13 is 30.09. Okay, but it's not due to the new employees that you've um, hired. Okay. No, not necessarily. Right. Okay. But you know, because I'm saying, because you're hiring new, and you've hired some, uh, y you know, individuals. You have new positions that's in this budget, and could this be a reflection? But it's not. So you're just saying it's just a requirement from. So it's not due to your hirings at all. Yeah. So based on our. that were frozen. Yeah. So based on the fiscal year 2012, uh, 2012 staffing pattern, we've only increased the number of positions by one, which is the post commission. Mm -hmm. But we've, in the past, have not funded some of the vacancies that exist, like for 2012. We have several vacancies that are left unfilled because of the uh, appropriation levels. And so the positions that are, are vacant, did you 
that you put they in are included in fiscal year 2013 you're right no but as vacant and, and you, you put in for yes. budget for those positions not a blank yes ma'am okay Are you so you're anticipating then? Is this just a a, a gradual increase in your your power bills from 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars? An increase? Yes, ma'am. Plus, we're bringing online another building that has been off for the year. I'm not even sure about this, but do you have any idea in terms of um, the manpower development fund? And uh, other than you using it, of course, for all your other programs, and then whatever balance there is, you need authorization from the board to be able then to use it for operations. Uh, do you do you anticipate then operating at the same level for the, with? the use of the Manpower Development Fund? Yes, ma'am. There is an, an when, when you look at it, of course, holistically, and uh, with all the different object categories, where your expenses are, that there is a decrease in the total request for the Manpower Development Fund from $1.8 million in fiscal year 2012 to $1.5 million. Can you explain that? It's um, the one point. The one point eight is only for operations. So if you go further down, the request in 2012 is 2.3, and the request for 2013 is 1 1.9. And um, part of that is because we move the um, we're moving the request for the the utilities over to Fund One. And uh, also, um, and what page are you reading that from? Um, eight. Eight. Page eight. It's in the middle column. Correct. And the authorized level in 2012, um, some of it has to do with um, additional funding that was collected and received based on the receipts in prior year that have been um, authorized and used for current year ops operations. And also on that, you can see in fiscal year 2012, the under contractual services, the uh, the delta there of 800,000 uh, versus the request of 73, it's basically moving that operational component to the general fund. In the uh, allocation of funds analysis is that in the general fund for 2012, you're at 85.55%, and uh, your submission is at 90.27%, and the governor's request is 89.24%. For the Manpower Development Fund for 2012, it's 14.45%. Your request is 9.73%.
and the governor's request is 10.76%. So you're requesting then for additional fund in this analysis from the general fund for contractual services, supplies, equipment, and miscellaneous expenses. And of course, very consistent levels compared to last year from the executive branch. So there's a, a greater requirement now from the general fund for the college's uh, operation. In the event that the manpower development fund projections are increased, then shifting it from the general fund to the manpower development fund doesn't really matter because we have in previous legislations been given the authority to use that for operations. Basically what we are, we're trying to do in our budget submission every year is identify what is the true cost of the manpower development to support the apprenticeship component. If there's additional funding that is available received collected with the increased number of H2 workers and the 70% that is allocated to the college, as long as we have that authority to use that additional funding to cover or support operations, then that's fine. Um, but basically when we do the budget presentation, it is under the, um, under the notion that this is what it's costing for the manpower development program. The authority to use the additional money is something separate, but as a budget presentation, this is what we're saying or how it's distinguished. But the flexibility is there for us to do, um, to do the uh, trade-off from one fund to another. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce uh, and welcome Senator Samavini. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a comment and then maybe just one question. First of all, you know, Mary, and, and you did a great job on the radio this morning and um, mentioning your team. Many of your team members are here. And I fully recognize and agree with your recognition of your team. They're a great team, doing a good job up there. And just noting in your testimony with your increase, I mean, that's, that's something to be proud of. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, in the mainland, they talk about um, the the individual's, uh, you know, reaction to economic downturns, uh, to go and seek, uh, you know, higher education and and uh, skill development. And obviously that has happened here, aside from the number of programs that you've advanced as president. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to say I'm proud of you and your team. I, I fully believe that you're worth every bit of, every penny of that 20 plus million dollars uh, I know we're going to haggle over it when we sit in there in session and figure it out. Um, I guess my, my only question would be, you mentioned you're working with the front on release. Um, not, is this just not only for payroll, but the complete release of your, uh, of your current 15% uh, set aside? I've requested for the complete release of the $2 million. Okay. So, Mary, what would this allow you to do other than finishing the fiscal year with all your fiduciary responsibilities is there is there anything in there programmatically or anything above and beyond your absolute current uh, obligation salaries and benefits and operations it just allows me to continue to employ the employees I currently have okay. and to start the school year off with the employees that we need okay. because there we have a few vacancies like in the high schools for example so if I can't um, if, if we don't receive that money right. then come the beginning of the academic year I can't make offers until, uh, unless you've included in fiscal year 2012. Sure. And, and that's very important for us to know. Uh, because, I mean, when we talk about bare bones, we want to know what bare bones are. I mean, everybody's at the bone right now. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm, honestly, Mary, this will help us when we deliberate because we'll know when we're starting with that number and even as hard as you have to work right now to get your releases to keep that school going, the college going, you know, at least that can compel us on the floor to support, uh, you know, whatever we can above your operation because I don't believe anybody in this legislature is going to, um, you know, argue with the success of the college and the need for the college to continue in its current capacity at bare minimum. Uh, so we'll know, so at least we know now for sure by your testimony on the record that that is just to get you through and to start uh, the new academic year. Uh, and, and then we'll have to move from there. But I just needed to make sure that that was on the record uh, as the president and your team 
uh, supporting that is the actual case. And, and then we'll have to, um, like I said, uh, grapple on the floor and see what we can do. So, but once again, thank you uh, to your team and an excellent presentation and uh, very well documented this morning. And uh, we appreciate all that, that you do. Thanks, Mary. Thank you very much. Senator Ada, Senator Mabini. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, all the support that I see here um, from your staff, your team, and uh, your board. Um, you know, Guam Community College is always like the shining star of all our agencies, you know, a really great model for all agencies, so I commend you. Um, and um, I really appreciate the enterprising nature that you all take to get to where you're at today, and I wish other agencies will, will model after that. Um, one, I just have a couple questions. Um, you know, one of the that what helps us, and I and I I, I will echo Senator uh, Duenas's comment as about um, I like to reward. We want to reward those agencies that have demonstrated their um, their commitment and uh, performance, and definitely GCC is one of those. So you have, you know, my support um, to be able to get get your full uh, budget for next year. But what would help us when we get to the floor is. Um, the kind of outcomes that uh, that each department is um, is aiming for, and so um, I know that every year, like in 2012 and as well as well 2013, uh, 2013, that you shoot for certain proposed outcomes and goals, and um, it would be beneficial for us to be able to see, you know, some of the comparative. Um, um, between like 2010, 11, 12, when it comes to some proposed outcomes. Um, and it helps it helps us debate and discuss discuss those and really defend why your agency should um, get those. Um, just just as an example, um, you know, you guys do a great job in um, e for, for presenting each department's uh, proposed performance indicators and proposed outcomes. But it'd be really great to show, like, wow, last year you said this was your goal. This year you hit the goal. If not, you exceeded the goal. And you know that really justifies the. Um, the support of the budget so that would be just very helpful for us and so we would be able because every year we do an assessment and so the assessment like I said earlier is is the uh, is a document that really drives a lot of the decisions it's linked to planning and budget for the college so we have an institutional assessment report produced every year it's available on our website um, and you know um, and that really helps us if a program wants to expand show me the numbers if the program needs to contract then we use that data. We use that data to say, okay, we're not meeting the expected levels, and so here's an area where we can cut back some or reallocate. And so we use that documentation because, one, it's tied to accreditation. Accreditation links planning and budgeting based on program review. Program review is not just for in-classroom. Program review is across the institution, including the academic units. So everyone has goals, objectives. Everyone measures those goals at the end of the year. And then there's a comp compiled report every year that is our institutional assessment report that is printed, produced, and we use that to guide the institution going forward. Mm -hmm. And so we will provide a copy of that to you, yeah, um, but it is also link. available on the, on the website. We can send you the link. Good. That'd be great. And then, then that really helps push for the, um, for the full support of the budget uh, that the college is requesting. That would be very excellent. Okay. And uh, one more question. Okay. Um, regarding the Manpower Development Fund, I know that the college has been, very, uh, has been the um, major leader when it comes to LEAD. Um, and alternative energy, and as you know, last night uh, the, the agency partnered with, um, or excuse me, there's a new company that now has partnered with GPA. So I'm wondering whether under the Manpower Development Fund or in the, under the college, if that's an area that you might be building upon as far as a program of study when it comes to alternative, uh, supporting alter alternative energy programs. So we have uh, photovoltaic one and two that's uh, funded right now through a National Science Foundation grant. Uh, PV1 and 2 and um, introduction to renewable energy, I, I believe, are alternate energy funding sources. So we have three courses that are b currently being developed with the help of an NSF grant, and those will be available, I believe they start in the uh, fall of 2012. Okay. Will that be under MDF? So perhaps? as long as it's identified as a apprenticeable trade, then we can include that as, as, the, uh, as part of the apprenticeship program. Okay. And so people that have um, industry that has uh, employees that they're willing to bring to a journey worker certificate or a journey worker level, then they can uh, build the standards uh, with the apprenticeship office. Okay, excellent. I would recommend uh, maybe meeting with that new group. I think Quantum is the name of the, the organization. I think um, they would be very interested. And so anyways, I commend you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mary. 
Mary, can you um, tell us basically how much uh, were you able to save the government in local funds in the four buildings that you have built? Oh, as far as the construction cost? Uh, you have everything. Hmm. Let me see. The federal grant for the student center was approximately 5.2 million. The um, learning resource center was approximately 4.8 million. The allied health center uh, was approximately, part of it was local, so uh, about maybe $3 million for the Allied Health Center. And then the foundation building right now, I believe, is pegged at about five, maybe about five million. So those are the four buildings um, that we have. The most colorful building is the, is the student center, 100% ERA funded. Um, and second in line to that is the Learning Resource Center, which uh, actually had the support of the Foundation of Governors for the um, A&E and then a grant from the um, Anapisi grant, U.S. Department of Education for about two million sum, and then the um, U.S. Department of Agriculture, it's actually a loan, but it was uh, ARA money, and then the uh, Department of Energy provided the uh, photovoltaics for the roof. And so all of those four, and Department of Interior provided the collateral equipment. All of those four buildings uh, by the end of this year will all have photovoltaic systems on the roof. We have two that are complete and two that are um, pending installation right now. Thank you. Well, I, I wanted to make sure we get that out. You know we do have uh, a law that's been in existence since the, uh, I think when I first came in the 23rd Guam legislature where, where I mentioned earlier, of course, is that we really would like to reward those who have done you know, well, those who have excelled. And usually the way the language is written, of course, in that legislation is that if there are savings that you know, any one or an institution has provided this, of course, that there should be you know, that uh, reward as well that should be uh, granted to uh, the institution. So I think it was important, of course, to have you state this so that then it builds a a better case as well, you know, for your request of your budget. And that's what we have on the books today. But we have a few more things that are coming up in the very, very short term that will also, um, that is representative of additional federal money to support additional infrastructure and improvement for the college. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Senator Ravini, another question? It's just one question. I know that um, ERA money um, issues have been floating around with other institutions or whatnot. I'm just wondering, is there something that you could share with us as far as ideas um, where Guam Community College can help um, or assist um, our, our sister institutions? There's many things that can be done with that ERA funding, um, and I reserve the uh, decision on how they're going to do that to the ed agencies that actually have it. However, there is an opportunity through MOUs between government enti entities that have been executed already between the Department of Education and, Depart and Guam Power, for example. Those same types of MOUs can be entered into to preserve the money that is on the table. There's different ways to do that. Um, and, you know, of course, the details, how the college can assist. Um, I submitted a proposal a couple days ago on how the college can assist, and so we are just waiting to see whether or not we will be um, selected or, or uh, requested for assistance. But you submitted it to the new superintendent. Not yet. I haven't met him yet, so. If you could keep us posted and see how, you know, we, yeah. we should be able to. You know, I'm convinced the money support. can be saved. Good. It takes a little bit of creative thinking and a little bit of creative um, agreements, but again, as I mentioned this morning, it's all about the partnerships, the partnerships you build. We can't do everything by ourselves, which is why the college has aggressively pursued partnerships with businesses, partnerships with other government agencies. If we all help each other, we'll be fine. We just need to have the initial dialogue, the discussion, and then follow through. Don't just have the discussion, follow through, because we've had this discussion a couple of years ago. And we're still here today with the same, in the same boat. 
And so we need to get out of that boat and start swimming quickly because the money is going to run out. Mm -hmm. And it would be very shameful for us to lose that money. There are partners out here willing to help. I know there are other government agencies that can help. There is a mechanism to do it. And so there's an opportunity for all of us to benefit. Thank you. If you could just, again, keep us posted and see how uh, you know, your colleagues here would be able to assist. Yes, ma'am. Well, I want to thank you very much for you know, an excellent presentation of uh, your budget and justification for your budget. And uh, of course, the uh, report of uh, the college's uh, successes, um, I know that um, at least from the members that you've heard here, and I'm you're gaining more support uh, from this uh, this body in terms of uh, your budget, and we would definitely, uh, you know, feel that those who work hard, those who excel, those who have saved money uh, for the government, really deserve to be able to continue uh, in in that vein, rather than, you know, not punishing, but just not recognizing and rewarding uh, your efforts that. We don't want that to go on the wayside. So we would definitely, uh, we've not made this commitment, I want to know to anybody, but so far GCC, so. Thank you very much. But we appreciate your presentation and of course uh, those who are here to support you as well. Thank you very much for what Thank you do you. for the college. It is 10-10 uh, and this concludes the uh, budget hearing for the Guam Community College. And uh, I keep, of course, uh, the window open uh, and the same thing that I've told others is that if there is anything of course in the law that restricts or ties your hand for you to be able to for the college to be able to move forward that please you know um, let us know uh, and if it's anything that was discussed even today um, more so where it can be actually uh, if it's budget related then it is uh, amendments that can actually be applied in this uh, budget packet so thank you again very much. And this uh, concludes then the public hearing, budget hearing for Guam Community College.